Hey guys, Matt here today. So we, we've looked at some of the things we have in Christ, Ephesians 1, right? We looked at in the last video, why did God save us? And it could have been the world's shortest video because he wanted to, for the praise of his glorious grace, right? Because he's God. He chose us because he wanted to. That's it. And then we get to verse 7, and I love verses 7 through 10. And I tell you why I love verses 7 through 10. Uh, because it shows a picture, a snapshot of God's grace. I shouldn't even say a snapshot. A series of snapshots. A growing snapshot. God's grace is like a nuclear bomb or like an atomic bomb, a mushroom cloud. Except for instead of reaping Havoc and death and destruction, it brings life and life more abundant. See, sometimes when we think about God's grace, the first thing that comes to our mind is forgiveness. And that's good. That's where it starts. But God's grace is so much more than forgiveness. In fact, even the unforgiven people, even the pagans, get to experience some elements of common grace, right? They get to see a sunrise. They get to view a sunset. They get to experience the glorious earth and the weather that God created, right? So grace is, is a manifold thing. It's a multifaceted thing. Grace is such a big thing. What is it? Well, we could say that grace is the unmerited, unwarranted, unrepayable, uh, un undeserved, on and on and on. It's a gift from God. We can't do anything to earn it. We can't do anything to pay it back, although people try, right? That's where legalism comes from. Nah, no, nah, grace is a gift from God. And in this passage, we're going to see what I think is a real great example of grace, okay? Not the definition of grace, but an example of grace. It goes like this, verse 7 of Ephesians 1. In Him, the operative phrase, in Him, in Christ, in Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of His grace, which He lavished on us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of His will, according to the purpose which He set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in Him, things in heaven and things on earth. Isn't that something? It's, it's like this growing passage. It's just, you start off in verse 7, and, and we start, as we should, in Him. That's the focus. And it talks about redemption. That's where it starts, right? What's redemption? Well, redemption is a slavery term, right? We're all slaves. Romans 6. You're either a slave to Christ, or you're a slave to sin and death. And by the way, there's nothing better. There's nothing. Here's the, here's the great Great paradigm shift. Here it is. There's nothing more freeing and liberating than being a slave to Jesus Christ. That's another video. But here it is. In Christ, we have redemption through His blood. Okay, here. Watch how grace starts. Grace starts with redemption, doesn't it? Through His blood. Ah, you remember in Hebrews, the blood of bulls and goats could not wash away our sins, right? He just covered them for a season. Nah, but this is His blood. So, in Christ we have redemption, here's where it starts, through His blood, comma, the forgiveness of our trespasses. Praise God. Now watch what happens next. According to the riches of His grace. The riches. Suddenly His grace is expanding. It's the riches of His grace. Verse 8. Ah, which He lavished upon us. Mmm, okay. See, God's not up in heaven with a little eyedropper of grace and, and he, he leans over the veil of heaven and squeezes out a little grace and it comes down <whistles> and it hits the sinner and the sinner's born again and God says, okay, we'll see you when I call you home, son. Now go do your best. No, no, no. That's just, the redemption's just the beginning. He lavishes his grace upon us. Isn't that something? It's all grace. It's grace that anyone can teach and preach and understand this glorious book. 
It's grace that we breathe our next breath. We can do nothing apart from God's grace. It's all a gift from God. And if it's a gift, why should we boast? We should not. Everything's a gift from God. And He lavishes it on us. Think of Hebrews 4.16. Because of, of this blood that Jesus shed, we can boldly, boldly, that's grace, because of grace, we can boldly approach the very throne of grace and receive what? Mercy and grace. When? In our time of need, right? 24-7, 365. Do you see how grace is so much more? So we start out at redemption, and then it's the riches of His grace, and then He's lavishing it on us, but that it doesn't stop there. He lavishes it on us in all, all, all wisdom and insight. <laughs> Isn't that something? And this isn't man's wisdom and insight, no. This is God's wisdom and insight. He lavishes this grace upon us in all wisdom and insight. What happens next? Making known to us the mystery of His will. Ah, you see what happens? We start out at redemption. Pretty soon it's the riches of His grace. Pretty soon He's lavishing on us, but that's not all. In all wisdom and insight. And next thing you know, He's revealing a mystery. He does this a lot. Paul talks about revealing mysteries, and it's all by grace, right? So the next thing you know, in verse 9, he's making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and on earth. Do you see how, that's, how that expands? That's a picture of grace. First there's redemption through his blood, and then it's his riches in grace, and then he's lavishing on us in all wisdom and insight, and the next thing you know, he's revealing his will and, 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 and un, unearthing a, a mystery. What's the mystery? Well, that all things are going to be united in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. That doesn't mean everyone goes to heaven. It's not a, it's not a verse for universalism. It's, it, you could think of it like this. The world's a checkbook and it's out of balance and Jesus is coming back to put it all right. Even the, think of Romans 8, even the, the creation groans and utters every time there's a tornado or an earthquake or a rainstorm, every time something tragic happens on the earth, every time the, the earth rips open, it's the earth crying. When are you coming, Lord? Isn't that something? We're being held together. Christ holds all things together for us. That's grace. Grace starts out as forgiveness. It ends up as revealing a mystery that He's going to unite all things and it encompasses everything in the middle. He lavishes it on us. It's just a snap. It's just a little picture of how awesome this thing called grace is. We're going to look at it more in chapter 2 and talk about how salvation works, what it looks like. For by grace you've been saved through faith, not of your own works. It is a gift from God. We'll see that in chapter 2. All right, just a little snippet, just a little picture of God's grace and how amazing it is. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Peace.